This is Star Talk. Coming from uh, Facebook, this is Sylvain uh, Boutigny. Ah, yes. I would be interested uh, in having your insights about genetically modified animals and how important they may be for basic research as well as the pharmaceutical industry. Now, you are opening up a whole nother can of worms here, buddy, because we're talking about animals. Plants aren't sentient. Animals have feelings. So where do you stand, Bill? Plants are insentient. Insen- Bring it on, Chuck. Yeah. That is, they don't think. They don't think. As far as we know. That's right. Well, well as far as we know. That's right. Uh, Did you ever little- see the original movie, The Thing? Oh, it's good. I don't think I did. Imagine no heart, no feelings, the perfect creature. And it's because the thing is like this vegetable deal. All right, right. so uh, we do genetically modify animals. And this we're talking about lab rats that glow in the dark, the little mice. Or the mouse with the ear on its forehead, the human ear. Yeah, so these are very important to our research. These are very important to the way humans know uh, our our genes. And... on balance, I'm in favor of it. And, and I'm not a vegetarian. Maybe one day soon I will become one. No, no, you won't. Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> I mean, uh, but... You love bacon too much. Well, I mean, maybe. <laughs> but I understand, you know, we raise animals to kill them and eat them routinely. So we, by analogies, analogy, we raise especially mice for laboratory studies that uh, that enable wonderful things. With that said... I'm very sympathetic to the idea that there's a there's a line that you draw. Right. And a rhesus monkey is like very similar in in to me in many ways superior to my old boss. <laughs> so I can understand where you don't want to do experiments on on that guy or gal. That <laughs> Well you met him. No. <laughs> so you know who I'm talking about. So oh. I kid because I love. Oh, that's hilarious. If you're one of my old bosses out there, uh. just notice that consider yourself an amalgam. You are the uh. old for Bill Nye, the old boss is a <laughs> is a mixture of many characteristics of people for whom I worked. And I remind you all Composite as a, man. A, yes. As a uh, manager myself nowadays, people don't f- quit jobs. Right. They quit bosses. So with that said. I think it's still very important for humankind to have access to these so-called laboratory models. That's the noun they use to describe these rats and mice. Okay. That we have, whose genes we have modified to understand our own genes. So now, uh, with that being said, okay, so you do, you're, you're, you're saying that it is important. Um, should there be a push? Uh, (laughs) that sounded like a very specific kind of push for a second there uh should there be a push to find a different way or now here's my here's my follow-up to genetically modify these animals so that as you work on them they feel no pain or like do you understand me like i do suppose you could genetically modify a mouse so that the pain receptors a mouse is born with no pain receptors therefore it never knows any type of physical suffering because it can never feel that should Uh, that be the way that we we handle it so that's a hard question chuck because i don't know that you can prove that a mouse would never do that plus would it really be a mouse and would it be a good model for a human Gotcha. After you changed it. And ah. so the example I give you see, see. is okay. I know a guy, not too well, but I know a guy who's in his 30s who wants to have his head frozen so that in centuries hence, they can unfreeze his head and connect it to some future unfrozen head machine. And he will then be able to conduct his life and experience life three centuries from now. With that said... <laughs> After you do that, can you really replicate the brain combined with the central nervous system? Now, we're talking about mice in a laboratory. Right. And so I, I believe that, like, try to talk without moving your hands, even when we're on the radio. It's- there's something going on between, there's feedback between your distant nerve endings and your brain. And so I think if you were to modify a mouse so that it felt no pain... I'm not sure it would still be a good model for a person. There are people, I'm sure, who think deep thoughts about this. Right. Uh, but, and I don't know the answer. Yes, and uh, those people are heads in a jar. <laughs> That's what we're looking at. 
All right. Well, listen, that was a really uh, thought-provoking question, Sylvan, uh, or Sylvain, and we appreciate you for that. This is Star Talk. Star Talk.